Hi everyone, Leanne here from Jaded Blossom. Um, I have a new card to share with you today that I'm making uh, with the Autumn Leaves stamp set, The Rectangle Dies, and Happy Fall stamp set. Um, it's basically time for another Jaded Blossom challenge, uh, and this one's called Falling for Fall, so it's a fall themed. So I'm making a quick fall card for you today. So I'm using Distress Oxide inks and Spiced Marmalade, Aged Mahogany, and Evergreen Bough. I'm also using We Are Memory Keepers um, Autumn Splendor 12, 12 inch paper pad. Um, I'm making quickly um, a stamped background. I cut out my uh, rectangle of paper with, um, with my Jada Blossom die. And the size was three and a quarter by four and a half. And I'm stamping my uh, leaves, um, just freehand stamping actually, onto my little piece of uh, craft cardstock. I am out of it today, sorry guys. Anyway, so here now I'm using Evergreen Bow and I'm stamping the oak leaf. So basically I'm just making a piece of pattern paper. Um, I used, um, let me see, my cardstock for my background is from Cut Cardstock. It's G-Mand Cardstock, the Tindalo. It's got a wood grain. And I also use the other side of it uh, for my stamping piece on the front because I need something flat just so the craft cardstocks matched. Now I'm using my Spiced Marmalade. This is all in real time. Um, I didn't speed this up at all for you today. Now I'm just stamping on another leaf. Basically this is super, super quick and um, the nice thing about Distress Oxide inks is you can get a pretty sharp line. And I'm stamping also on a pad of paper from Stampin' Up, and that is, um, you know, gives a nice cushion surface to do your stamping. So now I'm just going to fill in around those three leaves. And, um, you know, I'm just adding little parts all around the edges. And it's I'm just, like I said, trying to make it look like a piece of pattern paper. I chose my colors today um, to go along with the Autumn Splendor plaid paper that I used from We Are Memory Keepers. And um, I just, I don't know if you guys make swatches of your inks, but I have like swatches of all my inks and I just kind of took my pattern paper that I wanted to use and kind of and ran it along all my Distress Oxide inks to find the colors that I liked. And it seemed like those three colors went the best. And um, so now I'm just, like I said, stamping some more leaves. Not rocket science or anything here. I'm kind of going for a vintage look with this card. And you'll see what I mean in a few minutes here. So I'm just going to finish stamping. I noticed that as I was stamping, my Spice Marmalade didn't really show up that great on my background. So I decided to um, make use of the neat product, like the neat um, the neat things that Distress Oxide inks can do. So I'm going to, you know, make the inks oxidize and it'll show up a little bit better when I do that. There we are. So just a little freehand stamping. And that's what you got. I actually quite like the colors sharp, but like I said, I need to oxidize them. So now I'm just take, taking my Distress Sprayer and I'm gonna lightly mist all my inks. And you'll notice that they really pop on the background. It makes them, um, you know, get distressed looking and that's okay because because that's what I was going for. Um, but now I'm using my Marvy Heat Tool and I'm just gonna dry my background. And you'll notice that they, um, the, the spice marmalade kind of um, brightens up on the background with the oxidation, oxidization, sorry. So there we are. So I'm just going to dry it all. And you'll notice it gets a little bit warped, but all I did was I, um, you know, folded it in a little folder of cardstock and I ran it through my Gemini, um, Gemini machine again and uh, just sort of pressed it out. That's also what I use to cut all my dies with. Um, I have the large Gemini. I love that machine. It's really great. It cuts stuff like butter. So there's my card. You'll notice that it's got the wood grain. I'm using ground espresso now with my tailored expression blend blending brushes. And I'm just going to, um, you know, blend around the edges to kind of help the, um, the wood grain pop up and also to give it a nice vintage look. Um, the center is going to be covered, so I don't really have to, you know, blend the center. So I'm just going to blend, run it around the edge. And, uh, that's what I'm going for, a vintage card today for, for the fall challenge. Now make sure that you come and enter the challenge. Um, it's always super fun. I'm using the label shape dies, you saw that, and I cut out uh, label shapes with um, a matching pattern paper from the same, um, from the same line. 
and also I'm cutting and the center piece that's the same paper the wood grain though on the on the back so just the flat side and I'm going to be stamping my greeting um, from um, happy fall with the distress oxide um, esp ground espresso ink and I'm using my um, mini I'm having a real hard time today. I'm using my Misty to stamp that. Uh, you'll notice that I sort of cut my image out um, of the of the paper, and then I um, I actually used tape to stick it down on my Misty, and then I put my little shape in it so I can stamp on the shape and it doesn't move around. I, I just find that works the best, especially if I want to stamp it twice. Um, it's always hard to stamp um, something something that's already been cut out, and this is just a little trick to do that. You got to get a Misty if you don't have one. They work great. Although there's some other brands on the market. I, I like my Misty, but other brands I'm sure will work uh, very similarly. So there we are. So now we're going to get going on my um, card making here. So there's my piece of paper. Um, that's the We Are Memory Keepers Autumn Splendor. And I'm using the same Grand Espresso and the same Tailored Expressions Blending Brush to just um, ink up my edges, make it a little look a little distressed, a little vintage. And, um, you know, kind of tone down the colors a little bit is what I was going for. I just love this plaid. It's so gorgeous. It's so pretty. And then I also ink up around the edge of this um, die cut also. You know, you, if, you, if you're going for an inked up thing, you kind of got to ink up everything. So there we are. I'm going to ink up the edges of my, um, my stitch rectangle die that I did my stamping on. And I'm just going to ink up all around the edges. And uh, then I'll be constructing my card pretty soon here. There we are. So like I said, you should definitely come along and play along for our challenge. Um, it's lots of fun. I'd love to see what you make. I'm applying my ATG gun to the ATG tape to the back of this layer and I'll be sticking it directly onto my card base. Um, I love fall's my favorite season. I love it. I love all the colors. I love the fall decorations. I just love it all. So I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And you always win. I believe you win a stamp set of your choice, which is also super cool. It's always nice to get a free stamp from Jada Blossom, right? There we are. So now we've centered that. And now I'm going to be adding my um, stamped piece directly to the background also. You'll notice it's a little flatter because I did run it through my Gemini, like I said, in a folder of, pay of cardstock just to, you know, kind of iron it flat. And uh, now I'm going to be sticking, sticking this down to the center of my plaid paper. That plaid piece of paper is actually cut to 3.75 by 5 inches. 5 inches? Blah. Um, so that's a half an inch larger on both sides than my die cut itself. So now I'm layering my die cuts and I'm keeping the top part um, flat to the die cut and then I'll be popping up the back of that um, label shaped die so it has a little presence on the card there. So there we go. I'm using my reverse tweezers from EK Success just so I can get my hands out of the way and see if it's straight. And I'll be using my 3M foam tape to pop that up on my card. So like I said, super quick and easy. You gotta love an easy card. Not too, not too much difficulty with this one. So there we are. And now if you don't like the distress look, you could have just left the stamping as, as is, more sharper, but I kind of like the distress look when it comes to that. So now I've got a piece of the same paper that I'm just gonna apply to the center of my, or the inside of my card. And if I've inked everything else, I might as well ink the edge of this too, you know, keep it, keep it all the same you know, all vintage looking. And um, I always like to add a little bit of something to the inside of my cards. Sometimes it's like, you know, a stamped image. Sometimes it's some of the paper that I had left from the card. Um, I'm just going to run uh, one stripe of my ATG tape across and then I'll um, try to get that nice and straight um, on the inside of my card. You still have plenty of room to write and uh, it just gives it a little something special. And now I'm just gonna flip that over and cut the edges off using a pair of scissors. And super easy peasy. So now because I can't leave well enough alone, you could leave the card here, you know, and it's still pretty, but I gotta add a little bit of sequin. So this is the Wild Honey Sequin Mix from Honeybee Stamps. And I'm using um, glossy accents to apply this to my card base. And you'll notice, oh. I'm a little stuck, so I'm gonna put use a stick pen and clear out my nozzle. 
and then I'll apply the glossy accents, like I said, to my card base. I'm using my Studio Katia embellishment wand to um, stick those down on the card. And, um, you know, these are just a mix. And, you know, they're pretty. They're kind of coppery and, and um, honey-colored, and some of them are clear. So they're, they're just a pretty mix from Honeybee Stamps, which is nice for fall. And um, I'm going to be sticking these all down. And there we go. Now, what's your favorite season? Are you are you fall people too? I do like Christmas. I have to say, I like them both. But um, I think card wise, I really like fall cards. They're just so pretty. I make a heck of a lot more Christmas cards because you know that's just the way it goes. But I love fall cards. So now I'm just applying these. Um, I'm just you know applying a mix of them. Nothing. Like I said, not rocket science, nothing special. And I'm just trying to give a little bit of glitter to this uh, vintage looking card. And uh, yeah, I got that cute little tray also, I think from Studio Katia, the little white tray that holds all the sequins while you, when you're working with them, which is kind of fun. So they're not supposed to stick to them. And, and actually it works pretty good for that, I find. I use it all the time. So there we are. So you got some pretty golds and honey colors and stuff like that. And um, I've got to add another one. I'm, you always got to hide one kind of behind, you know, behind your front image or your front sentiment. It always looks kind of neat to have one sticking out from behind, you know, especially if you have layers. So that's kind of fun. So there we go. Now we could leave it at less, but of course I can't leave anything alone. So I'm going to be adding my favorite, which are Nouveau Crystal Drops. This is the Moroccan Red. And it's kind of more of a, like a burgundy-ish color, but it matches the, um, it matches the um, aged mahogany distress oxide ink perfectly. So I'm just adding a few little dots, some in the center of sequins, some on the, on the paper themselves. And, you know, just to give it a little bit of interest, something fun. You know, this was a really simple card, so adding a few little details will kind of make it, you know, stand out, pop a little bit, right? So there we are. It's so pretty. I love using craft card stock when I'm doing um, fall, sh fall cards. It's just perfect for that. So there we are. So thank you so much for stopping by. And please head over to the Jaded Blossom blog and get inspired by all the other design team projects today and maybe enter one of your own because I'd love to see it. Um, gotta love fall. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. See you next time. Bye.